There's so much going on around me And I'm not so sure I like the things I see Looking through the eyes of unbelief is hopeless For the one who holds my hand says trust in me to the Lord uh, to give us this time that we can come and fellowship with him once again. We want to give him all glory, honor, and praise for leading and guiding us by his unseen hand. Truly, the Lord of hosts is in control, my brothers and sisters, and we can be assured that God is leading his people, not only here, but all over this world, even in the Middle East, my brothers and sisters. We thank him for the miraculous workings of God, my brothers and sisters, really puts a joy in our heart, my brothers and sisters, to know that, uh, you know, the things that we have believed for, for years and decades that have been preached to us, my brothers and sisters, it's all surfacing now, my brothers and sisters, and it puts such an excitement and joy in our heart. We want to give God all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. Uh, I wonder if my sister Ellie Sheff can come and sing a song this morning. <clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus. I thank God that I could be found in his presence. I'd like to sing the song for his glory. <clears throat> Today I faced a mountain that I had no strength to climb. For the struggle of this journey has made it hard in body and in mind. Where I stand distance on my own I cannot reach so this journey of a thousand steps begins right here on my knees soon I'll soar like an eagle high on wings of grace far into the heavens 
Where I can almost see God's face Rising in His splendor Heights I never knew What once looked like mountains Just a hill from heaven's point of view I may face things tomorrow I can't comprehend today Circumstances make it hard To find the strength to pray But I'm living in the promise I'll never leave you I will always see you through So what's this mountain to an eagle flying high To heaven's point of view Soon I'll soar like an eagle High on wings of grace Far into the heavens Where I can almost see God's face Rising in His splendor Heights I never knew What once looked like mountains Just a hill from heaven's point of view I may face things tomorrow I can't comprehend today Circumstances make it hard To find the strength to pray But I'm living in the promise I'll never leave you I will always see you through So what's this mountain To an eagle flying high From heaven's point of view Soon I'll soar like an eagle High on wings of grace Far into the heavens Where I can almost see God's face Rising in His splendor What once looked like mountains, just a hill from heaven's point of view. What once looked like mountains, just a hill from heaven's point of view. Amen. We thank God for those words. Truly, we don't know what our tomorrow holds for us, my brothers and sisters. It's uncertain. But we can trust this God that we serve, that he will take us through. You know, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they never knew that there was a Red Sea, my brothers and sisters. But God opened the way, my brothers and sisters. And so he is doing even at this very moment, my brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, to hear Netanyahu speak like that, my brothers, with the nations or without the nation, my brothers and sisters, it is such a, you know, uh, you can see this man has his confidence, you know, in the God, my right. princes of heaven. And, uh, you know, it, it places such a joy also in our heart, my brothers and sisters, to know that God is on our side. Right. Amen. I wonder if Brother Ashley can come. <clears throat> Sister Jean, if you have a song... Truly, in the wonderful name of Jesus, for the glory of God, I'll sing a song. (laughs) 
I know who I am I know where I'm going I know why I'm here Why I'm here with you I know why the earth goes around I know where the answers are found I know love's forever I know that it's true I know who I am I know where I'm going I know why I'm here Why I'm here with you I know why the earth goes around I know where the answers are found I know love's forever I know that it's true I know who to trust I know where to find him I know that he'll listen When I call his name My soul safe within He I know I can leave it there I know in the end I won't be ashamed I know who I am I know where I'm going I know why I'm here Why I'm here with you I know why the earth goes around I know where the answers are found I know love's forever I know that it's true It's not hard This morning I like to thank and praise the Lord for all his goodness and his love towards each and every one of us. My brothers and sisters, God is a good God. He never let us down in any circumstance. Um, my brothers and sisters, I request can you all, all pray for Jalil? I don't know. My brothers and sisters, his hand became so, so big, my brothers and sisters. But I just depend on the Lord that uh, God will heal him and make him better. Thank you. It is in the song.
When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my riches gain I count but loss and work on those wonderful songs. Uh, we would thank him for his word, my brothers and sisters, that comes to us from week to week, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> you know, we have received the word of God by conviction, my brothers and sisters. That's how we have received the word of God. And that's why we are a stable people, my brothers and sisters. We have not received it by an organization. But when the word of God comes to you by a conviction by the, of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, you do not have to deviate from it, my brothers and sisters. No matter what new the world comes up with, because the world always wants to give us, give us new things. Even the church world wants to always give us new things. We do not have to deviate from what God has given us. Just hold on to what God has given us. Be faithful and true to it, my brothers and sisters, because one of these days, God is going to take his bride away from this earth, my brothers and sisters. It's a last opportunity for man to get on board, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you this morning. Shall we stand? <clears throat> Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God.
Peter Devon. Amen. I want to greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus. Let's bow for a word of prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can be in your divine presence, Lord. You're the God that has watched over the lives of your children, my Father. Lord, you've seen every child that has come here this morning, my God. You see their hearts, you see their minds, my God. Lord, I pray that you will bless them, dear God. Guide them and lead them along this way. I pray for those that are not here, my God. Many of them on the beds of affliction, my God. Father, both locally and abroad, my God. I pray that you will reach out your nail pierced hands and touch them, Lord, and minister to them, my Father. Lord, we bring your word this morning, my God. You are the only one that we are dependent upon, my God, to direct our thoughts and guide our minds, Lord. We bring the nation of Israel, my God, and as soldiers, my Father. We pray that you'll be with them as well, my God. We commit to leaders, my Father. Help them to make the right decisions, my God. We commit this service now in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, my brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord to give us a good day today. And um, we have a message this morning. We're entitling it, Israel shall do valiantly. Israel shall do valiantly. My brothers and sisters, um, almost a year ago, the nation of Israel faced uh, one of the worst disasters, my brothers and sisters, in their history. Uh, only the Holocaust uh, was something that was greater. And uh, I remember we used this title uh, that week. And uh, tomorrow will be, uh, brothers and sisters, the 7th of October. And uh, nobody would have ever thought that the nation of Israel would have gone through what they went through, brothers and sisters, uh, would be where she is today. The world felt, my brothers and sisters, that in a short few months, uh, they would, uh, brothers, just, uh, you know, uh, roll up and fold up and uh, a leadership will be gone. But my brothers and sisters, uh, if we... Uh, I've heard to what Netanyahu had spoken and said. My brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that the more the world has tried to push him down, the more it seems that God has anointed him, my brothers and sisters, to rise up and speak to the nations of the world. My brothers and sisters, uh, we realize almost 3,500 years ago, brothers and sisters, God had spoken to Balaam, when uh, I would say, brothers and sisters, the nations of that time wanted to curse Israel. And my brothers and sisters, uh, Balaam even said, uh, what God uh, had blessed, uh, no man can curse. And so, my brothers and sisters, uh, we are in this period of time where we hear all uh, that the nations are speaking. But brothers and sisters, we realize that Israel is a blessed nation. And no matter what the world will have to want to say and do, they are not going to be able, my brothers and sisters, uh, to uh, really uh, create havoc in the midst of that nation. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we see two chess pieces here. And one is Israel, and uh, the other is Iran. My brothers and sisters, Iran has been using, uh, I would say, uh, its proxies... Uh, for the many, many uh, years. And my brothers and sisters, these proxies uh, have somewhat uh, been needling Israel from time to time. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we see at this moment of time that uh, Israel is now facing an head on collusion uh, with Iran. My brothers and sisters, we don't know what uh, the few next days may be, uh, but we leave that in God's hands, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but we know that God will direct a leadership to do the right thing. And we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, God has been uh, guiding the bride of Jesus Christ in these times. 
brothers and sisters, uh, and he's given us a picture that the world does not have. Even the religious world has a certain, uh, I would say, partial picture. And my brothers and sisters, they use it uh, for their purpose. But my brothers and sisters, uh, God has given the bride of Christ uh, a picture that no doubt the world did not want to listen. And every time you spoke about it, while well, it was a far thought. And uh, they felt, well, you know, uh, you do not need to talk about Israel so much. But my brothers and sisters, uh, as we get into, I would say, uh, the ensuing months, you would see how important it was for us to be able to know uh, what God was going to do with Israel. Because it's the timepiece that God has set for the bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus even said, um, when you see it, the, the Israel uh, puts uh, forth it, its leaves, uh, know that, brothers and sisters, your redemption is drawing nigh. Now, my brothers and sisters, one surety we have in the scriptures, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 35 says, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea and when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, God is calling the greatest celestial powers uh, to be witness uh, to what he is saying. No matter what the Ayatollah wants to say, or Joe Biden wants to say, or even Macron wants to say, they cannot bypass uh, what God is laying down there. He says, thus say the Lord which giveth the sun uh, for a light by day, because if the sun doesn't come out, uh, man will die. But God is using this illustration, my brothers and sisters, uh, to tell the world uh, that if these ordinances uh, move away, brothers and sisters, uh, then the nation of Israel will cease uh, to be uh, a nation. If those ordinances depart from before me, said the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease uh, from being a nation before me. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, every man in the world knows that the sun for ages have been coming out and it's not about any time to go away soon. Neither the stars uh, or the moon. My brothers and sisters, uh, we have to realize that uh, God calls these celestial lights uh, into, I would say, witnesses uh, that that nation of Israel is going to exist uh, no matter what the world is going to say. So uh, we realize that this morning, we know what the end picture is. The end picture is Israel is going no way. But between now and my brothers and sisters, uh, when God accomplishes what he wants to, there's going to be ups and downs for the nation of Israel, but nevertheless, she's going to come out on the top. So God has spoken through Jeremiah, and he said uh, that if these ordinances are there, the nation of Israel is going to be there. Now, we know, brothers and sisters, uh, that Iran attacked Israel not one time, on the 13th of uh, April this year, brothers and sisters, she attacked with almost 400, uh, I would say, missiles and other aspects and other things. But brothers and sisters, uh, they were not able to destroy Israel or devastate Israel. My brothers and sisters, on the 1st of October, they sent almost 200 missiles. Again, brothers and sisters, there wasn't one Jewish life killed. There was a Palestinian that was not supposed to be walking on the streets. He's supposed to have been in a bomb shelter some way. But brothers and sisters, uh, again, the Lord had shown to the world uh, that no matter what happens, uh, God will protect the nation of Israel. That doesn't mean uh, a Jew may not be killed uh, or soldiers will not be killed. But it's to show you uh, that God's favor is on the nation of Israel. So brothers and sisters... Uh, we realized that uh, Iran attacked on the 1st of October. And uh, we're moving very closely 
to the 7th of October, which will be a, a one-year anniversary of what uh, Hamas did to Israel. Brothers and sisters, uh, we don't know whether Israel will choose a date like that to go back and hit Iran that's left in their minds of their uh, leadership. But brothers and sisters, uh, what we have to recognize is that if you sat and looked at the faces of the leadership on the 8th of October 2023, brothers and sisters, uh, Netanyahu was in shock. Because, brothers, he never expected uh, something like that to happen. Even the military might didn't expect that. Brothers, 1,200 of her civilians were killed, and many were taken hostages. And the world has, had felt, she'll never come out of this. But my brothers and sisters, uh, he shocked the world when he stood at the podium, and my brothers declared to Iran, and my brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, it must not mess around with the nation of Israel. And my brothers and sisters, uh, even I would say right now, they're probably contemplating what they w are going to do. Already Iran, my brothers and sisters, on Friday, I would say, uh, Ayatollah, brothers and sisters, the first time in five years, he came out and he gave a speech and my brothers and sisters, uh, he actually said, brothers and sisters, that if Israel retaliates, then my brothers and sisters, Iran will retaliate. And there's going to be, uh, I would say, uh, a major war take place in the Middle East. Now we realize this is not yet the era of the miraculous. It's the build up to it. Brothers and sisters, a few actors will have to come on board. Egypt, Jordan. And my brothers and sisters, uh, names like, la like that, we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, uh, this is an introduction to how God is getting, uh, I would say, uh, the world uh, to look at what he's going to do. My brothers and sisters, by his might and his power. And my brothers and sisters, we cannot push this out 10 years from now, 5 years from now, that God's going to do something like this. We watch what's going on on ground. We realize it never has been this way before. My brothers and sisters, Hamas has almost been totally devastated. Brothers and sisters, uh, all Israel is doing uh, is doing a mopping up work in Gaza. She moved in, my brothers and sisters, into Lebanon. Almost, I would say, uh, brothers, uh, 50 percent uh, of a lot of uh, those tunnels have been dealt with. Brothers and sisters, they've got a lot of military might, and they are dealing with it at this moment. And my brothers and sisters, it reminds me of Joshua that had to deal with the enemies, uh, but he did not have sufficient time. And somehow, brothers and sisters, uh, God's going to work this whole thing uh, timelessly for the nation of Israel. But uh, we have to understand when Iran attacked Israel again, Brothers and sisters, we have seen that the world did not see that. But brothers and sisters, there has been the hand of God protecting Israel because you cannot get 200 ballistic missiles. We may show maybe a picture of that. Brothers hitting the prime sites in Israel and you don't come out with one Jewish death. That's a basic impossibility. Because Israel is not a huge area. It's not like South Africa. It's 200 miles, brothers and sisters, uh, in length and about uh, uh, 20 miles in breadth. Brothers and sisters, that's not large to send 200 uh, missiles uh, into this place. <clears throat> but nonetheless, we have to believe that God uh, protected the nation of Israel. Now, my brothers and sisters, excuse me, we see that Iran, long before brothers and sisters, uh, Hamas uh, did what she did, and Hezbollah uh, tried to do what they did. They, it is Iran that has had a plan, that has been in the making. 
And uh, one would say, well, where did they get this plan? They found these plans in the tunnels of Gaza. Brothers and sisters, what Iran had uh, given the proxies that they had to build up and prepare for hitting Israel. Now, my brothers and sisters, Iran was going to be the master of this plan. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it was going to be the one to tell Hamas or Hezbollah the date and the time when they need to collectively hit Israel. But brothers and sisters, you know uh, human nature is. Brothers and sisters, uh, the leadership of Hamas felt, well, we can do it alone. We don't need Hezbollah. And my brothers and sisters, on the 7th of October, they moved in without signaling, signaling Hezbollah, brothers and sisters, to devastate Israel and get all the glory. Well, you know what happened uh, on that day. But nonetheless, brothers and sisters, so Hezbollah was placed on the back foot. But because Hezbollah is also controlled by Iran, they have to somewhat, brothers and sisters, uh, go along with Hamas. Now, my brothers and sisters, that Hamas is almost defeated. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the leadership of Hezbollah is completely eliminated. Brothers and sisters, they all have all their military might sitting in the tunnels and the bunkers and got the soldiers that do not have leadership to direct them what to do. And this is why Israel, brothers and sisters, is trying to clean that up because when it cleans up Hamas and Hezbollah, brothers and sisters, uh, and it, the other tentacles, then it has to face uh, the one that made the plan, Iran. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, Israel didn't know that she will have to face Iran so quickly. So my brothers and sisters, all of this is being timed by God. I cannot tell you that the date and the time. We have to watch what is going on there. But you can be rest assured, brothers and sisters, uh, if Iran and Israel uh, has some kind of a warfare, the world is going to get engaged into some kind of a battle because already Iraq has said, if we suffer, the world must suffer. We will, if they blow Iranian oil fields, brothers and sisters, uh, we will stop the oil. And my brothers, Europe gets 23% of hair oil from uh, Iraq. So brothers and sisters, uh, China and the other nations uh, will probably not get oil as well. So Israel is going to be left with uh, two uh, major decisions. When we are going to hit Iran this time, what are we going to hit? My brothers, uh, Biden said they should not hit the nuclear sites. They should not even uh, try hitting the oil fields. So I don't know what Israel is going to really hit. But my brothers and sisters, some way Netanyahu has been known that he does not always listen to what America has got to say. So if it's time for Israel to break the yoke, then she is going to do something different. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, this game is going to get larger and bigger. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. It says uh, Iran's proxies threatened Israel with a ring of fire. And above that, they show you that this is Iran's plan. Iran uh, has given these other nations a plan to create a ring of fire aimed at stretching the Jewish state's resources and weakening its morale by forcing it to fight on several fronts at once. Brothers, the nations of the world had realized they are cowards. They won't face Israel on a one-to-one -one battle. And because of that, brothers and sisters, uh, Iran uh, made a plan that we have to come against Israel as a ring of fire, and that's the only way we can defeat it. And my brothers and sisters, uh, she gave the plan to Hamas, but Hamas had, I would say, jumped the plan. That's why it, it is where it is today. But nonetheless, brothers and sisters, air tentacles, that is, Iran's tentacles have been now severed and is being severed 
brothers and sisters, uh, therefore, she has to con she's going to meet Israel on a one-to-one -one basis. And so it says, uh, Hezbollah's daily rocket and drone attack into northern Israel beginning on 8th October 2023 have led to the evacuation of 70,000 Israeli from their arms in the north and forced Israel to keep a significant number of forces on its northern border to counteract the threat. Now my brothers and sisters, the reason Israel is fighting Lebanon at this moment is because just as Hamas had a plan to be able to take over, I would say, Gaza, Hezbollah had a plan. It was called Invasion Galilee. Brothers and sisters, they had the same plan in the sense that uh, they would come through the tunnels and they will invade Galilee and they will destroy the northern Israel. Brothers and sisters, those plans have been found in uh, those tunnels. And therefore, brothers and sisters, uh, Israel is saying, we're going to push, brothers and sisters, Hezbollah up to uh, beyond the river, uh, brothers and sisters, in Lebanon. And uh, that river, brothers and sisters, will become a border for Israel. So we see, brothers and sisters, uh, this has not been something that has happened from today. Maybe we don't like geography, but we have to put this in, but brothers and sisters, Iran is there, Israel is there. It's very small. Brothers and sisters, uh, Iraq is here, Syria is here, Jordan is here. And my brothers and sisters, uh, if Israel has to do something to Iran, they have to travel almost 1,600 kilometers. Brothers and sisters, they've already had the test runs by being able to deal with the Houthis, which is 2,200 kilometers. So, brothers and sisters, it's not a thing that they won't try to do. So we have to realize Israel knows what they will do uh, in the coming short days, I would have to say. But we realize, brothers and sisters, on the 1st of October, when they send these 200 missiles, brothers, ballistic missiles, God at his hand, he protected the nation of Israel. And I have to say, if these are the fragments of the era of the miraculous, in other words, the small things that God is doing prior to the era of the miraculous, what will it be? When brothers and sisters, this ring of fire that we're talking about wants to come against Israel from all sides. When we're talking about the ring of fire, we're dealing with brothers and sisters, Iran, we're dealing with Egypt, we're dealing with Jordan, we're dealing with Iraq, uh, we're dealing with Syria, brothers. Uh, the plan is we've got to hit Israel all at one time. They're going to tell the nations, you see what uh, happened to Hamas because they jumped the gun. And now so we have to be able to devastate Israel at one time. That is where we realize, brothers, Israel just with its own uh, military power cannot handle this coming from every side. Uh, it's going to be supernatural power that's going to be uh, involved. Because only supernatural power, as the word of God says, uh, the Lord shall be a wall of fire unto Israel. So we have to realize uh, God is only watering the appetite, brothers uh, of children of God as well, to show them, see what I can do, uh, even uh, in this instance of what is happening. And my brothers, uh, it will take a little time to tell you about all the testimonies because they're not all declared as yet. But brothers and sisters, we know there were schools that we hit. There were homes that we hit. Brothers, there were military bases that were hit. But yet, brothers and sisters, uh, Israel has come out on the top. So we have to believe that God has been showing his hand. The Iranian missiles, brothers and sisters, are not small missiles. Brothers and sisters, sir. Uh, and they were sent. They were not even sent, brothers and sisters, to deserts or to the sea. They were sent into civilian areas. 
And yet, brothers and sisters, not one civilian was killed. And my brothers and sisters, the cities of Israel are not small cities. They are gigantic cities, brothers and sisters. But God uh, somehow directed it, it elsewhere. Or the dome, uh, I would say, Ein Dome, got rid of them. Now, my brothers and sisters, look at the distance between Iran and Israel. 1,600 kilometers. And uh, yes, Yemen, that's the Houthis there. They already sent the missiles. Israel has already traveled that distance and bombed the ports. And they came out safely with no problems whatsoever. They only left behind, brothers and sisters, uh, I would say, uh, burning fire. Now, someone would uh, have to understand. You know, you never looked at the nation of Israel as a house of fire. Because they are a peaceful nation. Brothers and sisters, they don't like to be declared as uh, something in, in that language. But you cannot help but believe by what you're seeing uh, on your media and your televisions. Brothers, those pictures are not just uh, somebody lighting a fire. They are like Hiroshima and Nagasaki every day. Brothers and sisters, uh, 2,000 uh, ton bombs. Brothers and sisters being dropped, uh, I would say, in buildings that's causing craters. And all that is left in your mind uh, is a halo of fire. That is why we have to realize by the time Israel finishes off, Israel will come out being known as we will read the scriptures late, later. The house of Jacob shall be a house of fire. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's not going to be fire in the house. It's how God will use that nation to administer fire to the other nations so that she can be, be delivered and, uh, I would say, protected. So it is uh, no problem for Israel if it wants to deal with Iran's nuclear sites. Brother, she's already had the test run. She had run... I would say with the jets, 2,200 kilometers, and she knows how to fuel in midair and be able, brothers and sisters, uh, to uh, fly a planes. Now, my brothers and sisters, on the 13th of April, they sent uh, almost 330, I would say, missiles, uh, 170 suicide drones, uh, 120 ballistic missiles, 30 cruise missiles, brothers and sisters, and Israel came out of that. We know 1st of October, they sent 200. Brothers and sisters, look at the size of one missile. Imagine, brothers and sisters, if you knew they were going to send 200 missiles into a small space, like Peter Marisberg, uh, brothers and sisters, Durban, Tongat, and places like that. How houses are of no match. This time, my brothers and sisters, they did not even alert anyone, I would say, prior to time. They just alerted them just a few, I would say, minutes, because uh, these are ballistic missiles, they take brothers and sisters 11 minutes. Brothers and sisters, we shot from one place to the other. You don't have time to do anything. And my brothers and sisters, Israel didn't have much time, but just tell to our people, they already know to get into the bomb shelters when these missiles are coming. But brothers and sisters, uh, this will put terror into any nation. But look at Israel's leadership at the moment. It seems like Netanyahu has become fearless. Brothers, he's a human being. He's a natural man. Brothers and sisters, he, he has a pacemaker. Brothers and sisters, and neither is a youth, in his youth. But nonetheless, brothers and sisters, he's, you could see every time somebody is saying something now, he's not, brothers, it's being a pushback. He's, he's saying things that is really making them wonder what is going on. Brothers and sisters, uh, the Arab nations, I would say they respect this place. But if they 
really respected it, they will not send these ballistic missiles above this place. Because the way it seems, brothers and sisters, that one of these days uh, they're going to hit this place by their own selves. Brothers and sisters, because uh, this is not the first time they did this, this is the second time. And Israel with the iron, uh, I would say, iron dome, they, they shoot that uh, missile. And then uh, I would say uh, pieces of it comes falling down. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the way it's going to be. But one of these days they're going to be shocked that their own hands have brought destructions to themselves. Because brothers and sisters, uh, you cannot be sending 200 missiles to uh, a small place like that and feel why it will not hit uh, that holy sites. But brothers and sisters, uh, this is the second time that they're doing that. That's Israel's cities. They're not small cities. Brothers and sisters, but yet Israel came out on the top. That alone should tell us, brothers and sisters, the world doesn't want to believe that Israel was going to have an hour of the miraculous. Brothers and sisters, uh, she's sure going to have it. Because, brothers and sisters, uh, already the world uh, cannot understand where we put and how do we put these things uh, in its place. Remember, what we're talking about is not the bigger picture of what God is doing in Israel. God is doing all of this not because he wants to show uh, how powerful Israel can fight. And well, you know, look at war. His mind is, and the nation of Israel, the true Jew, that Messiah is going to come back. The two prophets are going to come back. And we're going to meet Messiah. We're going to receive the Spirit of God. That is the bigger picture. But in order to get their brothers and sisters, uh, Israel has to clear ground. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the two prophets will have to stand in Jerusalem. And they are not going to be afraid while missiles are coming and we can't talk and we can't preach. Brothers and sisters, that is why we got to get through this phase. That's why there is uh, that era of the miraculous, to soften the hearts of the Jewish people. So brothers and sisters, these, uh, I would have to call them little miracles in comparison to what the era of the miraculous is going to be. Because my brothers and sisters, uh, the world will see. Because the Bible says the nations will put their hands in their mouth. They will be shocked. Because God has got to devastate, brothers, that Islamic spirit. Because uh, missiles and gunpowder alone uh, is not going to clear the mind uh, of the nation of, uh, of, of the uh, Islamic nations. Brothers and sisters, so we can believe that Israel is going to see more miracles and finally it's going to move into, brothers and sisters, uh, that climax when the ring of fire of nations is going to come against Israel and God will show his miraculous power on, I'd say, a, a, a might, brothers and sisters, as never before. But we have to understand All of this is building to the point that from this introduction, whatever is going to happen, brothers and sisters, in the ensuing days between uh, Israel and Iran, brothers and sisters, because Israel is going to retaliate. What she's going to hit, that is yet to be. But when she does it, brothers and sisters, uh, I will have to say, Iran, if those sites that are going to be hit are going to be major sites, Iran is not going to take that embarrassment. And that is why we've got to realize, brothers and sisters, she felt she had Hamas, she had Hezbollah on her side, and she put enough fear into the surrounding Arab nations that they will not open the air spaces for Israel to fly a planes. But brothers and sisters, how miraculous this is that this man, brothers and sisters, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, bin Salman, brothers and sisters, uh, he didn't need to get involved uh, in this battle, my brothers and sisters, uh, in any wise. 
But he has stated now in the last week or two, he said personally, I'm not worried whether there is a Palestinian state or not. He said, my people may want uh, the Palestinians to have a state. But he says, that doesn't worry me. And my brothers and sisters, he's given the green light that if Israel needs uh, to use his airspace, brothers and sisters, for refueling, she is allowed. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, now we have to realize two years ago, the world at large would have never thought that this would happen to an Islamic nation that is so powerful and has got all the money, brothers and sisters, uh, and they will not want to bother about Israel. But my brothers and sisters, the scripture has already shown us that just after the era of the miraculous, which nations are coming to Israel to give their acceptance on the altars of Israel? Brothers, it's going to be Islamic nations. And one of those nations is Saudi Arabia. And that is why uh, we, we, we're looking at this man. So brothers and sisters, he has got all the money in the world. He can change whatever car he wants. He can fly where he wants. But suddenly, as the Bible has said, God will put in the hearts of men to fulfill his word. Brothers and sisters, uh, man can be thinking in another direction, but God will change the thought. Brothers and sisters, what has somewhat changed this man's concept a little bit? Brothers and sisters, I don't really know fully what had happened in his mind. But if the Bible tells me that God is going to devastate the nations of the world, that that Islamic spirit is going to be eradicated, this man has watched almost 400 um, missiles coming uh, First of April, brothers and sisters, it didn't touch Israel. And Israel, with its iron dome, had superiority, brothers and sisters, uh, in being able to defend itself. Well, they could have said, well, that, that's coincidental. Then again, his eyes got open when 200 missiles are being sent, ballistic missiles. You know, inside his heart... What is he saying? He would be saying, uh, Israel, I want you to come and give us the Iron Dome. I want you to give us the arrow. I want you to cover my oil fields so that when something happens, uh, we can also uh, be able to do what we are doing. So God knows how to change. Brothers and sisters, the mind of man, he hasn't seen the full thing as yet. But I'm just saying, if I was him and got all the money in the world, he might as well be in the line. We need this. We need protection. We need coverage. So brothers and sisters, uh, no doubt is making plans. And brothers and sisters, his short name is MBS. He's on the global rise. Uh, global rise. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we'll be here to see how he is going to issue the orders. The brothers and sisters, gold and uh, incense is going to be sent uh, to brothers and sisters Israel. He's young enough that I would say God doesn't take him away. He probably will be the man that will give the instructions, brothers and sisters, for that to happen. But we have to look at the scriptures. That in Isaiah 60, brothers and sisters, this is a scripture now that as we are living at this time, where we see the build-up to that era, Brothers and sisters, and uh, we're watching uh, how these events uh, move into being. We're seeing the introductions uh, of how God is opening the eyes uh, that I'm protecting my people because we have to believe God's protecting because on the 7th of October, brothers and sisters, 2023, it seemed like the world said, where's your God? How can your God look at all this? happened to your people, that they are devastated, 
The mothers are, are raped, children, babies are killed, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, atrocities uh, that is unthinkable done. Where's your God? Brothers, look at the faces uh, of the leaders as well, brothers and sisters. But God allowed 360, well, we would say four days, and tomorrow we'll say 365, brothers, to pick the nation up slowly. So God doesn't do everything instantaneously. He has a way of being able to show that he loves them and he cares about them. And my brothers, uh, he gives them uh, a little time. Brothers and sisters, uh, I believe there's no Jew that is really looking at, the, looking at the leadership at the moment. He's saying, well, we thank God for a man like Netanyahu there. We know that it's just not the man. We know there's God behind him. But brothers, he did not cave in. And no doubt, tomorrow, as they will think about this, what has, hap has happened, they don't have to realize, well, it's hopeless. We have risen from that. But brothers and sisters, so whatever is going to be in the next few days or weeks, it's going to bring about a conflict. The reason this is all being pushed together and held back is because Joe Biden doesn't want a war. He doesn't want Israel to finish Iran off. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he, he just wants everything to be calm till the election is over. Remember, it's one month to the election. So in your mind, you've got to understand how close all of these events are. And my brothers and sisters, uh, if it's the right time, God is going to allow Israel to do what it has to do. Whatever the election in America is going to be, is going to be. And God knows where that's going to lead. But brothers and sisters, uh, when that takes place, we realize Israel is going to do valiantly. She's going to come out of this victoriously. Already she has some governors that are torch of fire in the midst of sheaves. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but collectively... We have to realize uh, the nation of Israel has to become that house of fire. So we see this is now in front of us. It's when Israel come, is coming out of that short space of, remember the era of the miraculous is not going to be six months. It's not going to be one year. Brothers and sisters, for Israel as such, Brothers and sisters, air was when it's conducted by the celestial beings. I would say Michael is involved there. He will not need months and years to deal with Israel. Brothers and sisters, so the world is going to put their hands on their mouth. What we are seeing in the way is God giving wisdom for an army to be able to deal with what has to be dealt with. Behind the scenes, God is working as well. But brothers and sisters, when Israel is going to be put in a tight corner, she's going to come out of it. And these words are going to come alive. It's going to become anointed words. Arise, shine. In other words, forget about October 7th, 2023. Forget about what has happened. It's the past. You can keep it in the back of your mind. But it's going to be no more for this short while. Arise. They will have to awaken. Arise. And shine, for thy light is come. In other words, your hour of deliverance and the glory of the Lord is risen upon the brass. As we are seeing in a short way how the ballistic missiles uh, have been prevented and pro Israel has been protected. We're going to see in a bigger, larger way how these nations are going to be devastated. But it says the glory or the anointing or the supernatural power of God has risen on thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen, shall be seen upon thee. Brothers, it's not going to be in the dark. It's going to be in the open and it's going to be seen by the world. Already, brothers and sisters, we are seeing some things that we never thought we will see. That Israel will do the devastation that she's done to Hamas and Hezbollah. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. In other words, Macron will have to have a converted heart or a different mindset. He'll have to ask for forgiveness or something. Because the Bible says that kings are going to come, uh, brothers and sisters, to the brightness of thy rising. In other words, uh, who gave you this power? How did it happen? Biden was saying, no, we're holding back the, the weaponry. Macron says, no, no shipment must be given. How come uh, you rose to this brightness? Brothers and sisters, uh, that is why uh, in that picture, it's an, uh, even as Netanyahu had said, with it or without it, we'll still fight and win. Brothers and sisters, if it's without it, then what is going to be the power? It's got to be the supernatural power of God. So kings are going to come to see that. Then when that war has been op over, brothers and sisters, the Jewish nation that is now coming under persecution. And no doubt they will want to go back to their homeland. Because, as I had said, the bigger picture is not just this war. There is a pull inside the predestinated 144,000 and the woman of Revelation 12. Uh, we're going to get back to the land. We're going to get back to Israel. Not because they're going to make money there. They're going to get back because our two prophets are going to come on the scene. And we're, gonna, we're going to see Messiah. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's just like when you and I were in the denominational camps. And inside there was a stare of the little eagle when they heard that clarion call. Get back to the word of God. Get back to the pages of the word. Brothers, nothing could stop you to come back to the word. In the same way, nothing is going to stop uh, these uh, true Jews to come back. That is why there is going to be a final exodus. Because they are going to be pulled by Almighty God. I have cleared the ground. I've opened the land for you to come back. Lift up thine eyes, run about, and see all. They that gather themselves together, they shall come to thee, and thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy sides. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear. What does that mean? Then thou shalt see and flow together. It means the division in Israel is going to be over. From the leadership to the citizenship of Israel, they're going to think in the same way. Because everything is going to flow together. Thine heart shall fear, but fear with godly reverence and be enlarged. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The abundance of the sea is the multitudes of the people, their thinking is going to be changed uh, from anti-Semitism uh, to loving Israeli people because look at what God has done. The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee, meaning uh, the materialistic uh, power, the economical power will come flowing into Israel and will tell them, uh, build a temple. That is where B Bin Salem is going to come into the picture. Brothers, uh, because the money is going to pour in uh, for that temple to be built. They're not going to say we don't have the budget. Brothers and sisters, it's going to come. Yes, it. The multitudes of the camels shall cover thee. Brothers, it's not going to be camels. It's going to be trucks and loads of them. Ocean liners. Brothers and sisters, airplanes. They're going to come flooding into the airport of Israel or the roads of Israel. And the dromedaries of Midian and Ephra and all they from Sheba shall come. I don't know whether he'll be there, but somebody of prominence is going to make their way. Because brothers and sisters, uh, remember what's going to be seen is just only just not stopping the missiles. 
the world, the world is calling, we're heading towards a, wo a World War III. It, it, it looks like that, but brothers and sisters, this is going to be contained in the Middle East. And my brothers, it's for a specific purpose. It's to get all the nations lined up for the 70th week of Daniel. So brothers and sisters, it says uh, they shall all, all they from Sheba shall come. What are they coming? They shall bring the gold and the incense. If they bring incense, then there had to be a change. The Islamic spirit is no more. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, each of this can, can be enlarged in great detail, but I don't have the time this morning. Brothers and sisters, this is a little ancient map. Saudi Arabia is here. Brothers and sisters, Israel is there. There's Dedan, there's Sheba. They're going to bring gold and silver, um, uh, gold and incense, brothers, up to Israel. You know, brothers and sisters, when the queen of Sheba came all over to see Solomon, she brought things. Brothers and sisters, likewise, this is going to happen again. The flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Brothers and sisters, imagine all of this is going to be happening uh, when we are going to still be here. We're going to see sacrifices uh, being done. Not that the sacrifice can take away sin. But brothers and sisters, uh, God is going to get, I would have to say, that mindset of the Jew. Don't give me chickens and things like that. You give me uh, a lamb. Brothers and sisters, that is going to set the type right. That when they've come to know who Jesus Christ was the true lamb of God, they would have a natural type on ground. So brothers and sisters, and also the temple will be built. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Brothers and sisters, on Friday, this man, for the first time after five years, he came out, brothers and sisters, uh, to tell the world that what happened on the 7th of October, 2023, was right. Because Israel is an occupied land, and then they must be punished. And our 200 ballistic missiles, that's the punishment that we gave Israel. See, they use the word punishment. <laughs> they like using words like that because it's from a religious point of view. But brothers and sisters, he doesn't know, as I said. If the sun doesn't shine and the moon doesn't shine and the stars, you can talk that way. But brothers and sisters, uh, he's not going to have good sleep. Already, brothers and sisters, uh, he doesn't know what Israel is going to do. The nations of the world, they don't know. But he's given his two pence worth, I would say. And my brothers and sisters, he's the one that made the plan. Brothers and sisters, and you can see from this, he has got just religious men standing and and reading the prayer book. His military men were not there this time around. Why? They were guarding him lest Israel bomb at that time. Normally those men supposed to be with him, but they're not there. So he came out of the hiding, brothers and sisters, just to read this prayer and ran away. Brothers and sisters, I have to say, within the next few days or short weeks, how Israel might strike Iran. Brothers and sisters, she's got this place. That is where the nuclear powers are. We don't know whether she'll do that. But brothers and sisters, she can take these different routes she wants. Brothers and sisters, and I love to say, one way or the other, she's going to be able to uh, devastate if she wants to the oil fields, if that happens, our petrol price is going to go up because, brothers and sisters, it's going to affect those things. But look at the other scripture it says. 
while the world is in this condition, as this, I would say, time moves from the build-up now into that era of the miraculous, what, was, what is going to be in Israel? It says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and holiness, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So, brothers, the war is necessary for Israel to extend its boundary lines and be, I would say, a nation that has been delivered from all these terrorist nations around there. That's Obadiah is only one chapter. And the Bible tells us the reason God's going to do that is because what I would say these Islamic nations had done when God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to devastate Jerusalem, they jumped and they shouted. And they said, burn it, pull it down, burn it. God never forgot that word, words. And my brothers, but the Bible tells us with all clarity, there's going to be deliverance on Mount Zion. Brothers and sisters, Israel does not have land on this side of Jordan. Jordan is there. Brothers and sisters, Jordan, or the river Jordan is there. This is Jordan. And my brothers and sisters, she doesn't have land at the moment on that side. But when God gave land to Israel, Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, they had all these lands. And if the Bible says Israel has got to possess her possessions, what does that mean? She'll have to take over the Temple Mount. She's in her hands, but it has to come down. She has to move over on this side of Jordan. That is why we have to see how this build-up has to pull in, brothers and sisters, uh, Jordan into the picture. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and when the ring of fire is complete, brothers and sisters, God's going to do a devastation on an order that has never been seen. And my brothers and sisters, so she will have to, I would say, possess her possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, we have seen that Israel has been a powerful nation. But it says the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble. That is the Islamic nations that are around the other side of Jordan. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken. It doesn't mean that there won't be a Palestinian left or Jordanian or whoever it is. They will lose their sovereignty. There will not be a ruling power anymore. And Israel will put hits, men in there, to be able to supervise and run those areas. And the influx of the Jews that will come will flood into those places for the purpose to say, we will be settled after our old estates. We're going to where, and they know that, that uh, tree line, brothers and sisters, they know which tribe they come from. They know where their ancient houses were. They will move in. And my brothers and sisters, the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the captivity of this house of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites even to Zarephath. It gives you that, I would say, the geogra geographical line where the boundary line will be. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sep Harad shall possess the cities of the south. So, brothers and sisters, if Ayatollah wants to say the punishment we gave is because they are in occupied land, what are they going to say when Israel is going to take the land on this side of Jordan that belongs to the nations that are Islamic and going to say they are sovereign? The Bible says they shall possess their possession. And they of the south possess the Mount Esau, 
and they of the plain the Philistines, that's Gaza, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, that's the West Bank. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead on that side of Jordan. Brothers and sisters, they will move over. And this picture now from there moves into the millennium where it says, and the Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. In other words, brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ comes back again, the twelve apostles will be in Jerusalem, ruling, my brothers and sisters, the territories of Israel at that time. And my brothers and sisters, we have to believe that precisely at the moment, Israel, my brothers and sisters, is contemplating, are we going to go easy? Or are we going to go the way God wants us to go? Brothers and sisters, the world is at a knife edge, space of time, of what it's going to do. And my brothers and sisters, uh, America is saying, don't do it. Brothers and sisters, if Israel just closes the eyes, then my brothers and sisters, a people will have to stay in the bunkers or the hotels and all of these places. But that is not what she wants. Balaam said, come, nations of the world or Moab, I will advertise you what this people, Israel, will do to thy people, the modern day Islamic ring of fire. And my brothers and sisters, he said that Jehovah God had seen nothing wrong in Israel. And my brothers and sisters, she's dwelling all alone. And the Bible says, brothers, how Israel will devastate these nations 3,500 years ago. And that scripture, Numbers 24, he said, and Israel shall do valiantly. You use the word valiantly, not in ordinary life, but on the battlefront. Valiantly is when an army has done valiantly. And so I have to say, brothers and sisters, the next days and short weeks are going to be days that is going to be important for Israel. But when it's said and done, it's not going to cave in. It's going to move into the next chapter. The brothers and sisters in, is in the word of God. Remember, brothers and sisters, what we've been seeing is not, I would say, the end of everything. It's just the introduction into that event. And my brothers and sisters, when it's done, I will have to say, the bride of Jesus Christ will not be going to sleep. Brothers and sisters, she will let, sure no, I can't uh, try to excite you before time. Brothers and sisters, but I have to say, just seeing what you're seeing excites our hearts. But remember, that is not the end for the bride of Christ. God has got something coming. Brothers and sisters, that's going to push back all these things that you and I have faced over the many months and just push it out of our mind to make us realize why we have taken this way and why we've gone this way. Because, brothers and sisters, the world cannot harass Israel forever. And the devil cannot harass the bride of Christ forever as well. Because she is God's children. God is going to move her and lead her, brothers, in front of us. So I have to say, brothers, it's going to be wonderful to watch how this thing unfolds. And be prayerful. And pray for one another. And may God bless you all. Let's stand to our feet today. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to be living at this hour of time. Lord, I pray for every child. You see their hearts, you see their minds, you see their beings, dear God. Lord, you know it all in their hearts, the many things that they go through. I pray that you will touch them and deliver them, my God. Even the nation of Israel, I pray that you will bless them, Lord. Be with the leaders. Lord, we know in a short while, the world will experience things that they never thought they'll experience. But Lord, we commit all things into your hands now. And we ask all these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ and for your glory. 
Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you this morning. Amen.